Cooking is like painting. You start with an empty canvas, and then you add your colors, one layer at a time, until it's full. But unless you are very minimalistic or happen to be a pretty uninspired painter, you're then going to work on the details, the shadows and the highlights to make your painting really stand out. With cooking, your colors are your ingredients and you work on the details of the dish by flavoring and seasoning it. A simple dish that works well for me to improve my seasoning skills are Thai curries. Thai curries aren't only one of my favorite type of dish to make and packed full of flavors, they are also really fast to make on a weekday night and hard to mess up. So the dish we're going to make today is Panang curry. And Panang curry is one of the most popular curry dishes in Thailand. It's a type of red curry and it's got this really rich, zesty, spicy, coconutty sauce that just works well with meat and vegetables and it's just great. I was first taught this dish by my Thai neighbor. She always used to say that a good chef should taste that dish at least 10 times while cooking the dish. So let's try to make her proud. Now let's take a look at the ingredients that we're going to use today. There aren't really any written rules for what is and isn't allowed in a panang curry. So it's a great dish for just using whatever you have lying around. You can make it with meats or with vegetables only. You can keep it simple like I am here today with the humble red bell pepper or you could go with the whole vegetable mix. When it comes to meat in this dish you're also very flexible. A very popular version of panang curry uses pork and is also probably one of my favorite versions. It does take a bit longer to prepare and cook this way though so for the purposes of this recipe I'm going with chicken breasts. Now we come to the real flavor bombs of this dish. In every cuisine you have ingredients that will bring out the distinctive flavors that will make you say things like, ah, this tastes like a Thai curry. With Thai cooking, one of these ingredients is the kefir lime leaf, which has an intense, zesty flavor. To prepare them, we're going to fold them in half origami style and then rip off the stem like this, so that we have two halves. And in a similar vein to kefir lime leaves, we've got Thai basil. Thai basil is widely used in many Thai dishes and has a sweet taste that I really love. And now to the star of the show, our curry paste. This is where your main flavors will come from, as the paste is packed with a range of powerful flavor bombs. From chilies to lemongrass and garlic to kefir lime leaves that we're also gonna add on top later. Now of course you could also make the curry paste yourself, but well, it's definitely a great way to learn more about Thai cuisine, it could fill up a whole video on its own. And it would also quickly turn this simple and quick weekday dish into a mildly more strenuous Friday night kind of recipe. Nevertheless, find a high quality paste that you like and that also provides you with the right level of heat. Now that we know what's actually going into this dish, let's bring it all together. So we're starting of course with the coconut milk as our canvas. Coconut milk is pretty much the best canvas for flavor that you can have. That is, if you like coconut, of course. So for now, we're just using the coconut milk as you would use some oil. So we're gonna heat up a little bit in the bottom of the wok, and then to it, we'll add our curry paste. Key thing here is to make sure that the curry paste doesn't burn. And you can now see that the curry paste is combining with the coconut milk to form this fiery and very tasty paste to which we're gonna add our kefir lime leaves next. So here's what I'm looking for when I'm tasting the curry. The first thing is the spice level and how it's balanced with the sweetness from sugar and our Thai basil. I'm also looking at intense flavors from dominant ingredients in the curry paste, such as lemongrass, in contrast to the rich and silky mouthfeel from the coconut milk. Thirdly, even though we're using ingredients with lots of strong flavors, we also need a good salt content so that our sauce doesn't come out as bland, which would be a shame. And lastly, we want to work on that umami taste that works really well together with the zestiness that comes from the kefir lime leaves and lemon juice. So this is now a very good time for our first taste of 10. Um, we've now got quite a high intensity of curry paste in here and um, we've got the kefir lime leaves and what we're looking for now is what the spice level is like and to maybe balance it out with a little bit of sugar. It's actually getting pretty warm, so I should get to it. 
So we can now really taste that the curry paste is dominating, but it's not very salty. And we've also got quite a little bit of zestiness coming from the kefir lime leaves. So I think what we should add now is add a little bit of sugar to counteract this aggressive spice from the paste. Um, and then afterwards, we're also going to add some fish sauce to just layer in a little bit more depth and to get that umami taste. You can really taste the difference that the fish sauce makes in the dish. And also the sugar that we added is just a really nice balance with the spice from the curry paste. So what we're tasting now is just a much rounder dish in general. So this is now ready for our meat. We'll now want to cook this for 15 to 20 minutes. Um, if we were adding pork, we would probably cook this for half an hour to make sure that our meat gets really tender. Um, but for chicken, this is much quicker, of course. So around about 15 minutes should be fine. So now that this has been cooking for a while, it's time for another taste. The sauce has now got a really nice flavor and balance, uh, but it's quite intense. But that is actually on purpose because we are going to add more ingredients like the vegetables. And so you always have to make the sauce a little bit more intense so that when you add more ingredients, you basically water down the intensity. Um, and so this is exactly what I want right now. The curry has been cooking now for about 15 minutes and now we're going to add in the vegetables. So in our case, this is going to be the bell pepper together with the Thai basil. Um, and then we're going to give it another taste. You don't want to cook your curry too long because then your uh, sauce will evaporate and um, you won't really have much left for your rice, for example. All right, so we're almost done. And now is the perfect time to give this dish a few more tastes to see if it's gone in the right direction. So I can now really taste that the sauce is a little bit more watered down from the coconut milk, but also from the vegetables. And um, you could, if you wanted it more spicy and a little bit more flavorful right now, add more curry paste to it as well. I'm gonna keep it as is, but what I am gonna do is add a little bit more fish sauce and um, a little bit more sugar. And then I'm gonna add lemon juice just to give it that sing. Could also be lime juice, whatever you have. The smell coming from this is already amazing. And uh, the taste is also really nice. But let's give it the few final tastes that this dish deserves. Um, and also we wanna make my Thai neighbor proud. Um, so these ones are for you. So yeah, this is almost done. I am going to add some salt to it just to bring out the flavors a little bit more, but not too much because otherwise it could get too salty too quick. And that's not what we want. Is this the final one? I think we've found the perfect balance. Mission accomplished. One thing we did forget though, is to cook our rice. So we should do a speed run of that now. seasoned Panang curry. At least it's perfect to me. And I think the rule to taste your dish at least 10 times along the way while you're cooking it makes a lot of sense. This way you can really see your dish progressing and the flavors stacking on top of each other. And you can also really fine tune the balance between flavors and tastes like salty and sweet and spicy. And uh, this turned out pretty great. I can't wait to dig in and I'll see you in the next one.